Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on route import and control. Let's start our part 3. Alright, so one more command that I would like to show you here. Uh, instead of using the MQC, I'm going to use a traffic filter command. So let me go back to the uh, Gig001, display this. I'm going to undo my traffic uh, policy inbound. Okay, so now I should have no problem uh, pinging, all right, because I have removed the uh, policy. Okay, and my ACL is still intact. Okay, so that will be on my source 3333 to the destination 1.1 will get denied. So rather than using the policy, uh, as I mentioned that the easier way for you to configure is using this command called traffic filter. So we are going to use the traffic filter inbound and we are going to use an ACL then the ACL name is called filter. Okay. ACL name filter. All right, so this is how you can configure it. So by doing so, you do not need to use a traf uh, traffic classifier behavior or the uh, policy. So let's just do a display ACL all again. All right, so currently we have the ACL matching 333 111 will get permitted. So let me go back to router 3 minus A. If I source from 3 going to 1, it should be permitted. If I source from anywhere else, it will get denied. Okay. So this will be using the um, another command. All right, as I mentioned that uh, easier if you say you are using the uh, traffic filter okay and when I do a display ACL all there you have it all right but this case here uh, we will have a um, no statistic all right uh, just like the earlier one where we have the statistic but that one will be more on the QS way of doing it so this is the one that I mentioned all right but both of these achieve the same result you can use a traffic policy or you can use a traffic filter just in case if let's say you want to know how you can do the things it's having the same result but using different method okay okay so let's look into the ACL other features all right the features we are going to look into is called packet fragmentation so packet fragmentation can be supported using ACL and how you do that is that at the end of the ACL you are going to tell them whether it's a fragmented or non first prep fragmented packet. Now this is a keyword that we can use. Uh, later I'm going to do a demonstration on this. Fragmented packet basically means that I will have an ACL and I'm going to match ACL and with the fragment, fragmented packet. So if it's an ACL match with the source and destination IP and it's also fragmented, then it's just a match. Now another keyword here is called non-first fragmented. Non-first fragmented means that if the first packet is not fragmented but subsequent packet is fragmented, then I have a match. If let's say you do not specify fragmented or non-fragmented, then the packet is matched regardless whether it is fragmented or non-fragmented. Alright, so we have the keyword here, fragmented, non-fragmented or without the keyword. And finally, on the ACL, we have the option to use the time range. So basically means that you can have the ACL matching the time. All right. So not only that you have to match the condition under the ACL, but you have to match the time. Now, once you match the time, and if the time is within the time range that you define, you can do a deny or you can do a permit action. All right, so let's just look into this uh, final detail of the ACL in our lab. Okay, so let's jump back into our lab uh, router 2 now. Display ACL all. So I have a filter here. Okay, so that's my advanced filter, ACL3999. So I have rules number 5 and rules number 10. Okay, so let me go into 
my filter and I'm going to copy this rules and I'm going to show you the filter the fragment keyword alright so I do a space question mark you notice here if you want the system to match the fragment you have to uh, key in the fragment keyword or you can use the non first fragment keyword alright so if you didn't key in any of this keyword then it will be matched uh, without the uh, fragmentation checking okay now next I'm going to show you here is the time range okay time range but before you can use a time range you need to define a time range first all right as you can see that they ask for the name so I'm going to start from here okay and uh, I do not have any time range now I'm going to configure the time range I'm going to to allow this matching okay I'm going to allow this matching only if let's say during the uh, office hour all right so uh, let me do a display so I changed my system to put it under the Sunday all right so that this is not under the working hours and my working time now uh, current time now is this the date as well as the time and I'm going to do a time range okay let's give you a name all right give it a name and I'm going to specify when is my start time let's say my start time is 8 a.m. to 18 okay and I'm going to do it during the working days all right so my time range is called working and I'm going to apply it into my ACL okay so I'm going to do it here Oops, sorry I'm going to do a time range and the time range here is called the um, working there you go display this as you can see that the time range is working now since this time today now as in this recording I'm actually changed the time to uh, Sunday the day, uh, the day of here is non working time so in non working time it will not be matched all right so if you can see that it will not be matched under here you can see that it's inactive it will go into the deny so if I go into here router tree and do a ping using a source of three and ping into one it will fail all right because this is out of the time range this is not a working day now so because my working day just now that I mentioned here display time range working you can see that it's during working hour it will become active so since this is inactive it doesn't match it go into the denying IP now assuming that I'm going to change my date now I need to go back into the user view I'm going to use a clock set okay clock date time and uh, I'm going to use the hours here let's say now I'm going to use the office hour with uh, 2015 and the month as well as the date let's say I'm going to use a uh, let me check a date that is on working so that is correct that will be on Monday display clock okay so when I do a display ACL all all right so you can see that it still have not changed yet okay so now it's in Wednesday 9 and uh, you should have a active time display ACL all all right there you go so you can see that now it's active and I'm going to do a ping one more time and you can see that the ping is working so here we have the um, ACL using a time range now the next route selection tools that we are going to look into is called AS path filter now AS path filter is exclusively used for BGP because BGP we have the AS number and for us to match 
based on the AS number, we have to define what we call the regular expression. Now let's look into this example on how the AS path filter works. Now the IP AS path filter is the command 10 in this case referring to the uh, name and this is my action. Now when we use a dot asterisk, basically means that match all the AS path attribute, match any. Alright, so if we are going to do a underscore 100 and dollar sign, so basically underscore and the dollar sign here means that anything that is ending with 100 and ending basically means originated. And if we are going to use a caret and followed by the underscore, means that match the route received from AS100. And another example here is that we have underscore 100 pipe 200 with the dollar sign. So basically means that we are going to match the route originated from 100. The pipe here means all 200. So this will be our AS path filter. The next route selection tools that we are going to look into is called IP prefix. Okay, and the command is the IP IP prefix list. So the IP prefix list allow you to match based on the prefix number as well as the subnet mask. Now this is very important because ACL doesn't match your subnet mask. And uh, IP prefix do not filter packet. All right. So if you want to do a filtering of your packet, you use ACL. But if you want to filter the route update, you can use the IP prefix. So the last matching mode is denied, that's by default. And when the reference IP prefix doesn't match, the default matching mode is a permit. Okay, so we are going to look into this example to fully understand how this IP prefix list work. Now let's look into this example here. I have IP, IP prefix, that's the command. Filter is my name given to this IP prefix. Index 10 is just like our root number in ACL, so we have index number. Permit is our uh, action, and 1.1.1.0, this will be our IP, and we want to match this IP prefix. But you notice that I do not have any uh, subnet match that I'm matching. So for this, you are basically, you are going to match based on the route 1.1.1 slash 24. Okay, right. Another example here is that we are going to filter to permit based on 1101024 similar to above, but this time we have a keyword called less equal 32. Now, this keyword is matching your mask, your subnet mask. Okay. So what does it mean here is that we only want to match the route with 1110 with a mask that is less equal 32 from 24. So it's actually from 24 to 32 are permitted. Okay. So next, if we are going to use a command with a greater equal 26, then what happened? Now since you said that it's a greater equal 26, I'm going to match the prefix of 1110 using this keyword and the mask must be from 26 to 32 because 32 is a maximum mask that is permitted. And if you can configure greater equal 26 less equal 32 which basically means that it's a range and this range is the subnet mask range between 26 to 32 bit are permitted. And you also can use greater equal 8, less equal 32. But this time, you are going to match any prefix. Okay. So in another word, this particular keyword, IP prefix filter 10, permit 0000, 0, 0, 0 with a subnet of 0, basically means that it's any IP with this subnet mask. Okay. So basically, we are matching a subnet mask from 8 to 32 regardless on what is the IP and if you want to match every single thing so in this case my prefix name is called AA I want to permit every single thing 0000, 0, 0, 0 less equal 32 so basically this is permit any statement 
all right so this is our ip prefix list and the example on how you can interpret this ip prefix command all right so the next uh, filtering tools that we will look into is called community filter now community filter is used to filter pgp route based on community attribute all right so uh, if let's say you refer back into my BGP recording, I do use IP community filter. And for us to do that, we use the command called IP, then community filter. Here, we have a number. Uh, we use 1 to 99. This will be our basic community filter that is based on the community ID. Or from 100 to 199, where we are going to use a regular expression. Okay, so that will be the indicator so permit is our action and this will be our community now we can actually uh, enter multiple community separate by a space okay so in this case i'm matching a community 100 colon one now also can match a well-known community for example in this case is a no export now let me show you this particular command in the uh, command line so here i use the ip community filter and if I do a question mark, you notice that I have a basic here or I have an at once. All right. So if I'm going to use a basic, let's say I'm going to use number one, let's say permit. OK, 100 colon one. You can specify continue 200 colon two, 300 colon three and so on and so forth. OK, so this is our community filter. If you are going to use an advanced community filter, you can use an advanced like this and give them a name. So for example, I just call it as a test here and I'm going to specify permit followed by a regular expression. Okay, so you are going to use a regular expression to match our community. So there you have it, our community filter uh, exclusively used on the BGP selection. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.